After what I thought was rather a crazy idea in October, we're finally here and um, celebrating the anniversary of the 1937 coronation with a display of some of the coronation robes used 80 years ago tomorrow at Westminster Abbey. Here we can see the robe that was worn by Her Majesty the Queen. It is 14 feet long. It took 14 seamstresses at the Royal School, School of Needlework to complete this work, and it took them two months. We also have the coronation dress worn by Her Majesty, and the robes and dresses worn by Princess Elizabeth, now our present Queen, and her sister Princess Margaret, as well as other rather interesting items relating to that coronation. My thanks have to go to Her Majesty the Queen, who very kindly allowed us to display these wonderful gowns, and to Angela Kelly and Jackie Newbold, who are the Queen's dressers, and also to Royal Collection, who without them we would not have been able to mount this exhibition. It's going to make a huge difference to Glam's, it should attract a large number of people over the next few months. It runs until the 29th of October and um, I'm looking forward to everyone coming along and enjoying and getting a really close-up view of some of these wonderful, wonderful items which um, I am told will probably not be seen again for a very long time. So come to Glam's and uh, have a wonderful day out and enjoy our coronation exhibition. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Glam's. Today is the opening of the Coronation Robes exhibition um, that we used the Coronation on the 12th of May 1937, exactly 80 years ago today. What is going to happen is that very shortly, Lady, um, the Dowager Countess of Strathmore is going to um, say a little bit about the background and um, the significance of the collection. And then Lord Early is going to say um, uh, some of his memories, because um, he was one of the few people around today who were actually involved with the ceremony on the day. Then the Dowager Countess will open the exhibition, and then we'll all enjoy it. So, Lady Strathmore. <coughs> Thank you, Willie. Can you all hear me? Sure. <laughs> Nothing more annoying than being at something that you can't hear. It happens to me all the time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, well, first of all, Lord Lieutenant, Lord Early, ladies and gentlemen, my very, very best welcome to you all on behalf of my grandson, who's very sorry he can't be here today, but he's about to take terrifying exams at Sirencester at the Royal Agricultural College, and he's very, very up, up to high dough about that, and so he couldn't be here today, but he sends everybody his warmest wishes for a very enjoyable day, hopefully it lands. This is such a significant day, and before I do anything else, I want to give enormous tribute to Tommy Baxter, who's the castle administrator, who is it like the only person, I think, who remembered this is 80 years to this very moment that the coronation was happening in Westminster Abbey. He very bravely got onto the royal collection and said, that would it be possible to borrow the robes that were used because of the Queen Mother's significance here and at the coronation being crowned Queen. Uh, of course the Queen was asked and I was so grateful to Her Majesty for being very enthusiastic and thrilled about it and pleased that somebody had remembered the important date. And so she sent Angela her, Kelly, her dresser, here with the, all the robes and everything and everybody who's been involved, I do give her the warmest of thanks because it's been a lot of work to put it on and I'm sure everybody's going to enjoy it. The Queen Mother's significance, of course, for Glans was very important, that she should marry the Duke of York, who, who then un unexpectedly became king. So for Glans, I think from that moment onwards, we've been very lucky to enjoy really rather special um, things that we wouldn't have, and, and certainly a lot of publicity which brings people to keep this castle going, which is so important. So really, I just want to ask you to enjoy the day, and it's lovely to see you all here, all the 
people that work at Brahms and also the friends of Brahms and everybody else who's here. And it's my pleasure now to ask Lord Airely, who's very kindly come to give us his memories of being paid to his father. I have to say to you that I, my memory of that particular day is really was very little. Because I was only 11 years old, and when I was a page to my father, who was Lord Chamberlain to the Queen, or as she you know, was called here, Elizabeth of God, the connection between the Aries and the Strathmore has been very close over a long period of time. And indeed, uh, the second Lord Airy married the daughter of the second Lord Strathmore in 1696. And ever since that date, we are neighbours, we see a lot of each other, and it's been a marvellous relationship. And um, it, it, it has particular relevance today, because <coughs> when I received this invitation, I suddenly thought, my goodness me, I wonder whether I can't help a little here, because I've got some things that are at court here early, which might actually would fit in very well and be shown. And uh, the family were very acceptable to this idea. And you'll see when you go in and look at the uh, exhibition, there is a corner of it which was made up of uh, my father's uniform, which was a remarkable uniform, which was covered in gold ray uh, and incredibly heavy. How he managed to uh, wear this during the whole course of the day, I really don't know. But he was a big, strong man. But it is rather a remarkable uniform. And then there is my pages uniform, which uh, uh, was also on exhibition. And these two things are really in very good condition. And <clears throat> I think you'll be quite pleased to see there's a, photo, there's a painting of me as background to those uniforms as the Queen, the present Queen, Lord Chamberlain, dressed for a banquet at either Buckingham Palace or Winter Castle. And I, I can't tell you how impressed I am by the way in which it is all, as Edward Strathmore says, it's really beautifully done. And I'm quite sure that of all you people who have done to do with it, I do congratulate you. Um, there's just one thing that I, I think, if I give you an idea of it, I, I did manage to lay my hands on a few bits of paper, and I do tell you my memory about it, which is very limited. But there is a, the anointing, the crowning, and the enthroning of the Queen. On the conclusions of the homage after exclamation, the Queen rises and goes to the altar, attended by the bishops, her supporters, the mistress of the robes and the train bearers. It then goes to the consecration, the archbishop says the prayer, during which the queen kneels. The queen rises and goes to the false stool, set before the altar and kneels. Then there is the anointing, four duchesses, summoned by Garter, come forward to hold a canopy over the Queen, and then a prayer is said. The ring, the, um, the anointing having been performed, the keeper of the jewel house gives to the Archbishop the ring. The Archbishop puts the ring on the fourth finger of the Queen's right hand, and then there is another prayer. And then there is the crowning. The Archbishop takes the crown from the altar and sets it on the Queen's head. This is Elizabeth Spozlar. And this is where she was born, as you all know, and spent her childhood. And I thought that this was sort of an I I have to say, I will have seen this, because I was there. But I don't recall it. That's why I have to read it. The, um, the um, Regalia uh, was made up of my father as the leader 
and Lord Chamberlain, and uh, with him was the Earl of Haddington. And his position, I must have take a look at this, his, yes, actually he was the ivory rod with the dove. And then there was the scepter with the cross which was drawn by the Duke of Rutland. And his coronet was carried by his page. I should have said that, that Lord Harrington's page was Desmond O'Brien. And I think, you know, I can't, uh, I, I can't absolutely be sure of it, but I suspect that I'm the only person living today of all the pages that were there on that day. So, to me, it is a very romantic and wonderful to have the opportunity of saying a few words, and I hope, and I'm sure, you will really enjoy the exhibition. Thank you very much.